Um, today we have Lindsay from Nourish Move Love joining us. And um, I actually asked her to do an interview with me because I had just such an inspiration that the Lord wanted me to interview different women from different areas of life that have expertise as it pertains to health and nutrition and fitness. And I really believe that Lindsay is just a wealth of knowledge and information. I personally have benefited from so much of her wealth of knowledge, especially when it came to, uh, you know, taking care of my body postpartum and post-surgery and just learning how to properly engage my core and everything that I did and what a difference it made. But also I just love doing her workouts because they're always fun, inspirational, and she really works you hard. Like it's not <laughs> some like step, step, step tapping and you're just kind of like moving across your floor. She actually like really works you hard. So, um, Lindsay, I um, am so excited to have you here today and just share your heart with these women. And if you could kind of just give a sum up about your credentials, why you do what you do, and what Nourish Move Love is all about. Yeah, so I started, thank you so much for having me, by the way. I've just adored Dashing Dish since I started my little tiny, you know, square of the internet back in 2015. And I know you started even before that. And so it's been so fun to follow along with you and see your community grow. But I um, started Nourish Move Love in 2015. I've always had a passion for fitness. And so <clears throat> I originally uh, went to school for, you know, business and marketing and kind of got into that career, sat at a desk and did not enjoy it. And so I got into medical sales, which I did love the sales aspect. But as I was doing medical sales, kind of on the side, I was pursuing my fitness certifications for my own knowledge because I was um, running in marathons and then I got stress fractures. So I decided to get into the strength training realm and I wanted to teach myself more about strength training. So I got certified as a personal trainer on the side and thought I'd start personal training some friends and it was fun, but I didn't love personal training. I found my true love for fitness in the group fitness studio. So like go to teach, you know, take a class. I was teaching at, you know, Lifetime and a couple different studios, but you take a class and it's like, music is pumping for an hour. Everybody's there to have a good time, make themselves a better person. Like I was teaching, I always taught the early morning 5am. Like these people are dedicated hard workers. I just loved it. And I thought, how often do we just get like an hour of uninterrupted time to hang out with people? And like, everybody's got a common goal to like become better, stronger. Like, it's just a great place to be. And I just loved the group fitness space, but obviously couldn't make a career out of teaching classes because you can only teach so many and um, couldn't really support myself or my family doing it. So I realized how much of a luxury it is to go to a group fitness class once I became a mom and my time became um, more sparse. And I originally grew up in a small town where we didn't even have access to classes like this. So I wanted to take that to the online space and make these classes accessible to everybody. So that's kind of how Nourish Move Lab was born. So I film free at-home workouts for women. Mostly, of course, we have men who do our workouts too, but it's mostly geared towards women and it has followed me through the seasons of life. So we do have prenatal and postpartum content because I have three babies, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old now. And um, but really the heart behind Nourish Move Love when I started it is nourish your body or uh, yeah, it's basically like, you know, nourish your body with good food and God's word and move your body and create movement in your life and just love yourself and others. It's kind of like how Nourish Move Love was born. And so um, I just believe like, that's just like the holistic health thing, but I particularly focus on movement. So I'm a certified um, trainer, pre and postnatal trainer as well, and focus in the, the fitness space and group fitness is like my specialty, but really taking those classes online and making them free and accessible for everybody at home. So we film free at home workouts. You can find them on our website or on our YouTube channel. And then we also have free workout plans. So we provide every day. You don't have to figure out which one to choose if you don't want to. Um, literally, we, we give you a seven day workout plan every single week. So you can just follow the workout plans and they're all free. So that's what I do and kind of the heart behind Nourish Move Love. And I will tell you that me and my husband have done many of your workouts. So yes, guys do do the workouts as well. And um, I will tell you as well that I share with anybody and everybody, especially moms, uh, to follow you on YouTube, because as you mentioned, it's just so easy. You can literally just go right on YouTube on Nurse Move Love. And there's like all your latest workouts right there. You don't have to search for anything. You can just find every workout. So it's so easy. So anybody who has access to the internet 
can do your workouts and you don't need a lot of equipment. That's another thing. You can just have your dumbbells and a bottle of water and there you go. I've literally done your workouts with Oliver, my one-year-old son in a high chair while he's eating his breakfast. Like, so that's what I love. You can, and just like you mentioned, not every person has access to a group fitness class. I love group fitness. That's what I as well as uh, how I started in fitness. Um, I started doing kickboxing classes and stuff, but I can't do that now. So that's why I love your classes. Um, so we're going to get into some questions. We have six questions that were sent in and a few of them were actually listed a few different times. So these are questions that a lot of people have. And um, I believe that they're going to be beneficial to you guys. Um, just hearing Lindsay's wisdom. So Lindsay, what are some safer, easier ways to start exercising as a beginner? Absolutely. So I think walking is the most underrated form of exercise around like hands down. I don't think we walk enough. And, and so I know activity trackers are more common nowadays, but I truly do strive for eight to 10,000 steps a day. So 10,000 steps a day is my goal. Just like every day. Fortunately, having kids really does help me mm. achieve that goal That's true. <laughs> because they get me up in the morning and moving. And as well as just like, I get more activity than I would, you know, just like taking them to the park after school, all those things. So kids do help in that arena, but just walking, I do think that is the most underrated form of exercise. I don't think that we view it in necessarily. If you are a beginner walking, like people come they're like first trimester, nausea, fatigue, what do I do? Walk. Like yep. walking can get you through pretty much all seasons of life. And so walking is like the most underrated form of exercise, striving for that step goal daily, I would say is a really sustainable way to start as a beginner. And I always believe in having a plan, but I also think you, the best workout plan for anybody is one you're actually going to do. So find what it is you enjoy. Like if you do like running or swimming or yoga or bar or strength training, whatever it is you like to do, find that and find someone who on YouTube for free or wherever, um, because you're not going to do an exercise. I could tell you, I believe truly just like from my knowledge and education base, strength training is the best form of exercise. Um, but I, if you don't love it, you're not going to do it. So find something that you love and then you'll, you'll stick to it, but do have a plan. Like I think having a plan, that's why we offered, we offer free workout plans. We have so many free workout plans on our site because having a plan helps, especially if you're a beginner for me, having a plan, something I can, I can stick to all I got to do is show up and press play. Someone tells you what to do. You know, it does help to have a plan. It helps you reach your goals faster because, um, if you're going to strength train three days a week, you should go for like three full body strength training days a week. Um, but having a plan does help because it, it holds you accountable and it, it tells you what to do. So, and I will tell you when I came back to working out after my two surgeries, they were back to back. So I thought postpartum six weeks was a long time to not work out, but I actually could not work out for three months. And so that was the longest I've ever remember not working out. And so for me, I followed your workouts, but body weight, and you do have Rachel, who is a, uh, a lot of times a modifier a, that mm -hmm. does workouts with you. So if you can't do your moves, which most of the times I still can't <laughs> because you're pretty advanced. I just watch Rachel who does a modification. So modifying where you're at, starting with body weight, body weight exercises are very underrated as well. And you can get really sore doing body weight stuff. So, and then moving up from there, that's been 100%. Oh, so, um, yes. What would you say the mini minimum amount of exercise? I know you touched on like three times a strength training week. Um, do you think that that's all across the board or does it just depend on your fitness level? But what is really the minimum we should be doing? Yeah. Like you said, of course it depends on your goals and whatever goals you have. <clears throat> um, but if you're just like, trying to live a well-rounded life and you're, you know, in the beginner season, I would definitely say my suggestion. And again, it is finding what works for you, but I think striving for that eight to 10,000 steps a day paired with strength training three times a week. If you could get in like three 20 minute strength sessions a week, I would say that's a really good baseline for like a well-rounded fitness routine that's achievable and attainable for most people. Um, so I, like I said, strength training, I do feel is, is really important because we do lose muscle mass, especially as we age. And <clears throat> a lot of us tend to focus on like cardio for weight loss, but strength training just has so much more longevity in it for your health, for your bone density, for, you know, and you can get cardiovascular from that as well. Um, 
So I'm just a, a really big proponent of strength training for women of all ages and all seasons of life. It's just like so good for you. And like you said, it can be body weight too when you're coming, if you're a beginner or coming back postpartum, it's all very, I also had knee surgery, a very humbling experience to start at ground zero again. Um, but that's why I love strength training. And I think the biggest thing that keeps you coming back, and I, I think I love to have people focus when you start out on a fitness journey or whether you're starting out or you're in the myth, maybe you're an advanced person as well, having um, a progress goal versus an aesthetic goal. So an aesthetic goal is I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to fit into these jeans. Um, I want to reduce uh, body fat in this area of my body. That would be more aesthetic goal. I think that those fade pretty fast and they're not going to keep you coming back. But if you set a progress goal, especially coming back postpartum or coming back from surgery or even just beginning, whether that progress goal is I want to do one push up from my toes. I want to run one mile. I want to um, squat, you know, with 15 or 20, 25 pound dumbbells, whatever that is, having a progress goal is going to keep you coming back. And that's why I love strength training, because you can always just take that progress goal. Like I came back, I had a pull up goal. Um, once I got had knee surgery, I was like, well, I can't do lower body. So I can only do upper body and pull ups. I was at, I was six months postpartum, so I couldn't do any pull-ups. And so I was like, I, I want to be able to do 10 consecutive pull-ups. Um, and so that's my goal. And that kept me coming back and coming back. And now I have even bigger goals. So I think a progress goal is much more likely to keep you coming back versus an aesthetic goal. So whatever journey you're at, setting a progress goal. So maybe your progress goal is to work out or strength train three times a week. That's a great progress goal. Yeah, that's so true. And that's so, so good. A lot of times as women, especially we are after what working out can do as far as how we look. But um, I think you and I can both attest to when you do, when you can't work out because of surgery or having babies, but especially surgery, it makes you realize how much better you actually feel when you do exercise. Um, like I was going to the chiropractor all the time when I couldn't exercise and having all kinds of back issues and stuff. And now that I'm back to working out, they're all gone. And so, you know, it really shows you just moving your body, how God really did design us to do that and things just work better. And so it's really, when you think about your health and you think about the, the way that you can feel like you got a gold star just for, you know, reaching different goals and making progress, it really uh, sets such a different tone in your mind when it comes to exercise. So I have to ask because you're a busy mom and you have your own business. How do you personally fit exercise into your daily life? Yeah, it's definitely changed throughout seasons of, of life and it still changes. Like I don't have a, a specific regiment where I'm like, I have to be up at 5 a.m. every day. Like that's just not realistic or achievable for me. So there are certain days tomorrow. My day is jam packed. I have like a church thing and I have work thing and um, helping out my son's school. So I'm like, I'm the only way I will get a workout in is if I wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. So that's what I have to do tomorrow if I want to move my body. Um, so looking at my schedule every week and finding what's realistic for me, typically I will do, you know, maybe two to three morning workouts and then like two or three afternoon or evening if I need to or whatever it looks like to try and give myself. I'm really trying to prioritize sleep in this season of my life. I have a one-year-old, so we're finally all sleeping through the night and I'm really trying to prioritize sleep for just my own health because um, it's something I haven't been able to prioritize for a long time. So I'm trying to really prioritize that as like my first metric of health right now. And then, um, but really for me, it's having a schedule, looking at my schedule every week, knowing what my schedule looks like and scheduling it in, knowing when I'm going to be able to do it and making that happen on my calendar. So for me, it's having a schedule and I am not like, I've totally shifted. I am totally into a good 20 minutes. And that's why you, like you said, if I'm going to show up and work for 20 minutes, I'm going to work hard. So it's all about like reaching your level of fatigue. And so you don't have to work out for this 60 minute metric that we've like got in our brains from group fitness classes and whatnot. For me, 20 minutes a day paired with my eight to 10,000 steps outside of that is perfect. So I'm striving for 20 to 30 minutes a day, five days a week paired with eight to 10,000 steps outside of that. So that's like my, and that, and I'm, I'm building muscle. I'm outside. That's above and beyond like maintenance mode that's building. And so that's where I'm at. And I will say my biggest thing is like having grace and knowing that 10 minutes is better than no minutes. So mm -hmm. if I start a workout, it gets interrupted because I have a sick kid or whatever that happens, like 10 minutes is better than zero minutes. And so just getting what I can in, but I'm, I'm really big on like 
efficient workouts, getting the most I can in 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh man. I so agree with that. I have to work out before seven 15, my husband and daughter leave to school and he takes her and goes to work and I have my one-year-old. So it's me and him. So I kind of have to just make a 20 minute workout work wherever I can, whether it's his nap time or waking up at 5am, like you said, I have to just get a 20 minute workout in where I can. And so I don't have an hour. <laughs> so, you know, that, that just means that no matter what season of life you're in, you, you can do it. Even if it's a 10 minute workout, like you said, or getting your steps in, like you can do it. Um, and I think a lot of times we make excuses for a lot of different things, but in the end, it really is about discipline because if you prioritize it and you plan it, you can get it in. And yes. how do you think that women um, that are in it, the season of life, specifically like menopause and on, um, how do you think that the the best uh, form of exercise that they should be picking? Like, wh what do you think that looks like for them? Yeah, again, that's not an area I have personal expertise in. So I can't like speak personally to it, but just from my knowledge, it would be strength training. Like strength training is just so good for all seasons of life. We start losing muscle mass at the age of 30 and it just slowly declines from there. And so the more strength and muscle mass you can have on your body, obviously as we age, we lose bone density as well. And menopause can draw from our bones. And so osteoporosis can become an issue. So strength training increases bone density and keeps our hearts healthy. I have a really big passion for heart health because my family struggles with heart issues. My mom had, and my brother have both gone into cardiac arrest due to like a hereditary disease. And so heart health is like, like there's just so many benefits to strength training and it's something that's accessible. It's a low impact. Um, so it's accessible as we age and the more muscle mass we can put on, I mean, the more fat we're gonna burn, which, you know, our metabolism slow down as we age as well. And so, and it's just, like you said, strength training is so good for injury prevention and keeping our bodies and joints healthy as we age as well. So keeping those t muscle tissues strong as we age is really important just to get us through those daily activities that we want to do too. So uh, strength training is definitely what I would suggest as you continue to age. Um, but I, again, it's all about doing what you do love. So if you do love to run, like, of course you should run, but I always recommend strength training. Yes. I, I so agree with that. It really is coming back to what are you actually going to do? <laughs> so if yes. you don't love strength training, uh, what I would recommend is find someone that can help you love it. So maybe that's working with a trainer, a group fitness, working out with someone, a partner. So my sister and I work out together and, you know, that makes me love strength training because I get to talk and hang out with my sister. So, you know, find a way that you can love it because it is so, so good for you. And it's so important, especially as women. Um, what are your thoughts on amino acids? Yeah, so amino acids are basically um, proteins. Basically, it's the building blocks of the protein in your body. And so we naturally produce some amino acids on our own, our body does, and then some we don't. And we have to get those sources from elsewhere, mostly nutrients and food. And so... I personally am like a minimalist when it comes to supplements. I like to not take a ton of supplements. It's just, um, I think it's become such a saturated industry. We're exposed to all these supplements and they're, they're now like commonly accessible to everybody. And I, we're not all training <laughs> necessarily hard enough to need them. We're not all running marathons. We're not all running Ironmans. We're just like everyday athletes. And so there's not a huge need for us to, take all these things in my opinion like all these green powders and all this there's a ton of stuff out there and i feel like it's accessible and it feels like an easy thing to latch on to like i need more protein in my diet so i'll take amino acids or it's what can happen and ultimately you can be paying for expensive urine because your body will just um, <laughs> rid of it if it doesn't need oh. it but i really believe in getting my nutrients from food i think that's something we've gotten too far away from and we've relied on supplements too much there is a time and a place for supplementation and I think you can seek your healthcare professional, especially if you're feeling lethargic or lacking things like that. Like definitely, um, there are, there is a time and a place for it, but I do think we've gotten too far away from seeking our nutrition from nutrition and seeking a whole. So if you are getting enough protein in your diet, you should it, specifically from fish and dairy and meat and eggs. So fish, dairy, meat, and eggs. If you have a well-rounded diet where you're eating meat and you're eating fish and you're eating dairy and eggs, I don't think you need amino acids. I personally do not take them. Um, 
my husband does take them. He's a professional volleyball player. So when he is in season, he does take amino acids uh, because he's training, he's playing beach volleyball for, you know, extended periods of time. And so his body just needs a little bit more to help with muscle repair and recovery. So he will take them during volleyball season. Um, but most of us honestly aren't training hard enough, lifting heavy enough uh, to actually need them. So I think we think we might be training hard enough that we need them, but unless you're really someone who's a, an endurance athlete, who's running Ironmans, running marathons, or competing in, in, in a high level of strength training CrossFit competitions, I don't think the general population needs amino acids if you have a diet that's getting enough meat and dairy and protein um, from meat, fish, and eggs. That's very, very good and very wise. And I will tell you, I 100% agree. I don't take any supplements. I do take man magnesium. It helps me sleep better. And that's like something that's been, you know, proven to be low in our diets uh, just because of the way our food is made and grown and all of that. So that's the only thing I take is magnesium. But, um, and not to say I'm against it. Like you said, sometimes you do need something extra. However, when it comes to supplements, I'm a big believer in just like you said, nutrition, but also a lot of it is money-making. And it's just about, uh, you know, getting you to give them your money and then you end up just peeing it out, like you said. <laughs> so unfortunately, like, and even like probiotics, you have to do research because a lot of them, they just, your stomach acid just literally kills any of the probiotics before it even reaches your small intestines. I mean, you, if you're going to take a supplement, you better know that you're paying for something that really works. Um, but I have one last question for you. And I know that you can really speak to this what would you say that some someone should do if they have a bad knee? Because I know you went through a surgery on your knee. Yeah, so I tore my meniscus and had knee surgery. And that's like the most brutal um, surgery because it's it just doesn't get blood flow. So they actually have to like fracture your thigh bone to draw blood into it. So the repair process, it's actually, I'm a year post-surgery like last week and I'm finally getting back to like full range movement. So it's a real stinker. So I definitely know about knee pain. And um I definitely have more, more of a heart for people who are like in these, I was, I was just like, it's fine. You just keep going mu muscle through it type of thing. But I definitely know what knee pain feels like. Um, and it stinks being in pain in general just stinks. But I will say that like, there is, there are things you could do uh, for me personally on my journey. What I have found most beneficial is these knee strengthening exercise routine that I follow daily. I do have some, I have some of this post on my website too, obviously, because I went through this, but, um, Walking backwards, specifically, if you can walk backwards on a treadmill at an incline with the treadmill off. So it's called a dead mill. So if you turn the treadmill off, you have to self-propel it, getting your knee behind your toe. So knee over toe and propelling that pushing really helps draw blood into all the tendons around your knee that are really hard to get blood flow to. So that blood flow helps um, decrease inflammation as well as help those those joints get lubrication basically and work and move better and so i start every workout with a 10 minute dead mill backwards walk um so you could do that you can just walk backwards um better if you're going uphill but if you have to self-propel that's even harder and that also strengthens the vmo which is the teardrop muscle above your knee which um really is usually under trained but one of the main shock absorbers of your knee and so Walking backwards is really helpful for me. And then also doing these knee strengthening exercises. So doing reverse tib raises. If you put your back against a wall, dorsiflexion, these are my feet and you pull your toes towards your face. So you're on your heels and you pull your toes towards your face. Those are called tib raises. Tibialis is the muscle that runs along your shin. So if you struggle with shin, chin splints that can be helpful too but we don't train that muscle and that's actually the number one shock absorber for when you're landing or have any knee over toe and uh, we you might have been trained like knees over toes is bad but actually if you think about your daily movements if you bend down to tie your shoe your knee goes over your toe if you walk up the stairs your knee goes over your toe in our daily movements our knee often goes over our toe and if we don't train that range of motion that's where injury does happen and so i am a proponent of training knee over toe and strengthening in that range of motion, but also strengthening the muscles around your knee, which is like your the tibialis. So it runs along the top of your shin, your VMO, which is the backwards walking that's on the teardrop. Um, also your quad leg extensions or general just squats in general um, can really help with that. And then reverse step ups. So I find a staircase and I stand on it with one foot and I tap my other heel to the ground. So that's about a six, um, well it, well, it depends, every step is different, but you wanna, in, I started really low, like I started very tiny, like standing on a book and now I'm up to like a stair, but um, reverse step ups, body weight, all body weight exercises that you can do at home, 
are meant to strengthen your knees. And I do them daily now, just after my knee injury, I never want to have that happen again. So I have those exercises on my website too, but those are my like top three knee strengthening exercises as well as isometric holds. If squats and lunges hurt your knees, try doing that in an isometric position. So just holding a wall sit or an, a, a squat in an isometric position, instead of going up and down, just hold it because holding at the hardest point is actually going to be the most challenging part of the exercise for you. You're going to get all the muscle building benefits of a squat without the knee pain. And that will improve your range of motion and get you to that full range. So I thought I would never lunge again, but I did so many isometric lunge holds and now I can do lunge jumps. It's amazing. But isometrics are also really good. Well, you see how your pain literally uh, turn, was used now to help other people. And that's what I love is like, if we look at anything we go through hard in life, we God can always use it to help other people if we allow him to. And if we take what we've learned and what God has given us wisdom through that situation and we use it to to help other people then it ultimately turns into something beautiful in the end and so look at all your wealth of knowledge when it comes to helping women especially with knee pain and knee problems and now you can really speak to that and you can say I I get you I've been there um so thank you for sharing I'm that. so glad thank to be you. on the other side so I'm sorry yes to it. <laughs> yes I'm glad to be on the other side <laughs> it's so good to be on the other side and I I can attest to you know now anybody who's going through a, a severely painful situation I can always say like there is there is a light on the end of the tunnel you know and um it's so good to be on that other side but you know that's what I just love is that we can help people while they're in that place of pain so thank you, Lindsay, for sharing your incredible heart. And you truly do have such a beautiful heart. I love reading your devotionals as well. She's such an awesome just woman and also mom. And I just love everything you do. So thank you for sharing with our community and um, just your time today. And um, I hope that everybody that's watching this goes to check out Nourish Move Love. Check out her, her website. Her social media pages, those are awesome too. And you share a ton of information on just your social media alone. So thank you again. And thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun.